critical feature for doing anything on the beach is to know about the walk assist function. If you press the minus on your control, the bike will pick up and start moving. And you need that to be able to get through the sand. Once you lift your hand, your thumb off that minus, it'll stop. Well, we're out here on the beach, and the first thing you need to understand about riding any e-bike or fat tire bike on the beach is that there are four types of sand. You have the hard pack, which is usually there at dead low tide. Then you have wet sand, mushy sand, and then the loose sand that you see at the top of the beach. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start up here in the loose sand. As you can see as I kick it, this is really loose and your tires are going to dig in here. Now there's a transition between the real loose sand and the mushy sand that you see right here and you might be able to ride your bike through this. The most difficult place to ride it is in the mushy sand and you could look at these footprints and see how much just a human has sunk in. Then going farther down the beach, still mushy. Now it's not as bad, this is just wet. And then down here at the low tide, this is still high tide right here, you see that the beach gets to be hard pack. If you can, hard pack is what you want to ride your e-bike on because it'll be the most stable. Now the test I'm going to do today is going to be challenging because you can see the slope of the beach and the fact that most of it is the mushy sand. So we'll see if the Nomad 1 has enough power to move up and down the beach effectively because this is where it's going to be hard. And when you're coming back, as the tide comes in, this is the type of sand you're going to end up dealing with most of the time. So let's get on the bike, check it out. I've got this sped up at about 2.5 times normal, and you can see that I'm trying to go up, straight up this berm and get stuck. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Then I come back down and get into the wet sand and moving just fine, heading up at an angle, which is the only way to do it, as you can see here. I have no problem at all getting directly up the hill or down as long as I go at an angle. And when you hit real mushy sand, sometimes the wheels are going to slip, but that's going to happen on any e-bike you use. You can see what I mean about this soft, mushy sand. Note how much the tires dug in, and when you get up here to the top where it becomes kind of a little berm, it really is dug in. That's up to my ankles. But the bike handled it. I had to be in power assist level five to be able to make it up here. The best approach of dealing with these slopes is not to go straight up like I tried to do right here. You can see as it really got steep, the, uh, the bike's wheel started to spin and I had to turn around and go back down. Look how deep everything dug in right here. But the bike was able to move through this sand effectively all the way back to where I've got it parked right now, way up there. Here's another example of how mushy this sand is. This is the absolute worst condition for riding a bike on the beach. I decided to go up near the berm and see how the bike would perform in the dry sand that had been packed down by the Rangers vehicles. And except for slipping a couple times, which is expected, you can see that the bike did just fine. Here I come. One of the great things about a step through model is that you can maintain your balance as you get on the bike. You don't have to lift your leg and swing it up over the bar here in the middle. Instead, it's an easy on, easy off. Hit the kickstand, and then off you go. Bottom line is, the bike did okay in probably the worst conditions possible. Mushy, mushy sand, not able to get down into the hard pack because the tide was still up a little bit. But I could negotiate this. I could move through this mushy sand just fine. Now, one thing you need to understand 
about riding on the beach is that going through the mushy sand takes more power. So you need to include that assessment or that judgment in terms of how far you're going to be able to go. Because as you grind through the mushy sand, it takes a lot of power. I had to be in pedal assist level five to get up this slope, even on a parallel. But if I'd been riding on the hard pack, just going straight, I would have been in pedal assist level one and cruising at 10 miles an hour. I like taking the battery out before I hose it down in case there's any sand that gets in here. So the first thing you're going to do is take your hose and don't have it on really, really high pressure, but a moderate pressure. And you're going to go ahead and hose off all the sand and pay particular attention to the disc brakes. Uh, what I like to do is take a microfiber cloth and I'll gently wipe off the rotors to ensure that all the sand is off the rotors. Then I'll go ahead and hit it uh, wherever I, I see any remaining sand or water after to get that out of the way after I blow it off with my blower. The blower is the best way to dry it off and you want it to be completely dry because you don't want rust. I mean this is salt water. Granted this is IPX6 which means it's resistant to a high stream of water but salt water can get in there. Once I'm done with that I've completed what I call my level one maintenance. I've got a full video up here on what I do for both level one and level two maintenance and I recommend you watch that. A quick ride on the beach isn't really enough to give this thing a full workout so I just went on a 20 mile ride as you can see here on my odometer and I tell you this thing is cranking. You can see from the bars that I didn't really I guess use that much power. I've still got plenty left over. The only thing I'll comment on is comfort. I really like the motorcycle style handlebars, it allowed me to kind of sit a little back and upright. And I do think I need to adjust the seat a little bit. I think I want to tilt it just a little bit forward because I was feeling the front here just a little bit too strongly. In conclusion, this is a capable beach bike. Yes, I had to make some adjustments in terms of the angle of attack to get through the real soft mushy sand, but it made it. It went from the bottom up to the top of that steep hill. Now I'm looking forward to loading this up with all my fishing gear to see how it performs with that additional weight. And for that, you'll have to wait to the next video. Comments? Have you used this on the beach? If so, throw them down below. Thanks.